All right. So this project has difficulties, especially when it comes to coloring your text, because there's just so many options that you have. So I was showing you at the end of the last video with some difficulty, the gradient effects within PhotoP. So that's the gradient effect, but notice it doesn't look like it's graded. It gradients. It doesn't look like it's a gradient. It starts with one color, ends with another color. So I can play with the scale. Come on, work with me. And that will shrink or expand its range. But that's tricky too. So instead, once you have a color solution that you think is interesting, this is what you might try. Especially if you want it different from the top to the bottom. I'm going to lasso just my top words and I'm going to duplicate them. And that automatically rasterizes them and puts the full gradient style on them. Because when you duplicate, it will also duplicate the layer styles. And then I can do the same thing with the bottom word. And there you see it, right? But now they both have individual layer styles, so I can change the colors if I want. We know how easy that is, but just so I can show you. And I'll steal them from my image. Go a little bit more purple. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and now the scale is going to make a big difference within each of these. And the angle, I can play with the angle separately on each one. So gradient can be a really, really subtle tool. Or really, really powerful, obvious choice you're making. There we go. I like that angle. So layer styles, you can split it up. You can do them individually. And then you can also treat it like digital coloring where you color behind your vectors. And I'll show you what that might look like, though I don't think I need it for this one. Now, you can even play with the axes a little bit. So generally, you do like a straight linear gradation, but if you wanted to play with bending it slightly, you can play with these adjustments as well. So there's just a lot of control you have. And how those gradients affect your lettering.
And it also doesn't have to be a linear gradient. You can make it radial, you know, going out from a center. You can make it a diamond. But generally, linear is the, the most obvious and understandable. So that's usually what I'll use. Ah, get off of that. So within each of these is an option. You just can extend it beyond, beyond, beyond. You can also turn off any of those effects at any time. So I'm going to turn on the pink. But then maybe I want to grow it a little bit. Option Command T. And I'm going to distort it. I can even warp it, which is impressive because Photoshop isn't able to warp it. Oh, I did not like that. So. The bow back before I free transformed it. And it's glitching on me. Oh, this is unfortunate. So what I'll do is I'm going to save this as a PSD with a different name. So I don't have to redo those gradients. That's going to be to the desktop right there. And I have the underside one here. So I'm going to turn this off. Open Photo P again. I'm going to drag in my old one. We're just dealing with really large file sizes here. And I'm going to delete this layer. And then I'm going to open up this one. File open. Where I save the gradients onto my desktop. There we go. And I'm going to save both of these. This is kind of fun. You can copy it, copy the layer, Command C, you know, edit copy, and then you can paste it into another Photoshop file. Edit paste. So I'll do that with both. Edit copy. And then edit paste. Ha, ah, but it didn't bring the, the effects over. Interesting. So this is something else you can do. So let me try it one more time. Copy. And then paste. There we go. Brought the effects over. But you can actually copy effects, like duplicate them, and then drag them onto other layers. See, so if I wanted the same effect on both, I can do that or not. Maybe I blend one into the other. Let me save it first. Close this. Now I'm saving it onto this one. Whew. But I think that's that's a pretty good finished poster layout. So now I gotta submit my other two components, right? And then we'll be done. I've gotta submit my color type and then my color type on a background with a border. So once it's saved, let's see.
let's make sure. It's going to be right there. Now I can start turning off different components and, and putting it into Canvas. So first, if this is my finished poster, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So export as a JPEG to the desktop. Because this is such a big file size, 16 by 20 by 350, 18 by 24, they're like huge sizes. I'm going to take the quality down to just above 50. It's not going to hurt that first JPEG, but it's going to make it load into Canvas a lot better and not take forever to save. So that's going to be in downloads. There it is. That's going to go to, to Canvas. But before I do that, in Canvas, I want to have just my color type shown. So I might save this as just a JPEG. And you can have it with the spot illustration like this. I just have to save it with a different name. Color type. Right now I can close it. I've got it saved. It's right there. My updated one. I don't need this one anymore. You can move stuff to the trash, just never empty your trash. All right, and now I go to Canvas and I need to load. I have my black text. I need to load my color text without my background. Where did I save that? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's here. So these both go into Canvas with your black type. And then I'm going to save my full poster. So it has width, background, and border. And we have enough time that I can show you how to do some fun stuff with this in Redbubble. So this was kind of our full layout project. We learned about how to apply now digital coloring and layer style coloring like we did for our logo to type that goes with our design. Now, I'm going to do one more thing, and that's to show you uh, what halftone color is. So if you go to assignments up the home page, and you look at this assignment, assignment six, You'll see a mentorship presentation on type design and layout, the kind of things we just did. You'll see a link to digital key art design and its growing influence. This is a, an article I thought was really interesting because it used to be that movie posters were like the, the most important job for graphic designers in media, in popular media. Now it's key art. And key art is the kind of thing you see in streaming services, so you guys should be aware. And often